하나 님 그래 점수 따마도 그리고 오고 오고들이 응응 Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, Peter, it's now 11 o'clock. We have uh, 15 participants joining us via WebEx and uh, 24 via YouTube. Please let us know if we should begin. Maybe you can give them a few five minutes so that we start and maybe participants who are joining, they can. Sharing their directions in terms of where they are, uh, maybe which, which regions they are coming from, as we wait for the others, so that we can maybe we can uh, do this after five minutes. We can start. Okay, thank you, Peter. We'll give the participants five more minutes to log in. You know, bank.
Ah, eh, sasa. Mwana. Uh, good morning once again. It's now 11.05, so we can uh, begin uh, today's session. And I would like to welcome everybody to today's webinar. This is the first webinar of 2021. My name is Diana Isokata, and I work for um, IFC, that is the International Finance Corporation. And I will be your moderator for today's session. I'll be ensuring that we are up and running. Uh, so I will request the participants, if you're having any challenges, do reach out uh, via the chat box and I will assist um, as far as I can. So before we kick off today's session, uh, we have some housekeeping rules and I'll request uh, Muli to move to the instruction slide so that I can take the participants through. Um, first, I will request all participants to kindly turn off your cameras. I can see there are some few people who are not on me. Just give me a minute. There. So um, I will request all participants to kindly turn off your cameras. We will only have the presenters switching on their cameras as they um, make their presentations. Please follow the instructions displayed on the screen. Um, the camera icon is the second icon to the left at the bottom of your screen. Please uh, switch off your cameras. And I can see we have one participant whose camera is still on. I will request them to kindly switch off your camera. And then in order to ensure that we have minimal interruption during the entire session, I would also request the participants to mute your audio by clicking the microphone icon. The microphone icon is uh, the first icon at the bottom of your screen to the left. Please click on it to mute your um, audio. And then we will be using the chat box to share feedback and pose questions. Uh, we will be tracking the feedback as the comments and questions are coming in and we'll have a Q&A session at the end of the session where we, you'll get uh, to pose uh, your questions to the panel. Uh, in case uh, we are experiencing any challenges with WebEx, uh, kindly click on the audio um, tab, then go to audio connection, then select call using my computer. Alternatively, you could join us through YouTube and I'll be pasting the link uh, uh, in the chat box shortly. Uh, finally, today's uh, webinar will be delivered by WebEx and YouTube and the session will be recorded. I will now hand over to Moses to kick us off. That's all from me. Thank you. O over to you, Moses. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. And good morning, all. Good to see us in the new year. Uh, just before I go to my presentation, I want to request Peter to press the meeting for us. Peter. Thank you, Moses. And welcome to all the participants. We have two on YouTube and uh, uh, we have one on YouTube and we did uh, on actually that on WebEx. So we welcome all of you. Let us bow for our prayer. Um, 
Father, this morning we want to thank you for the opportunity to witness your message. Thank you for this opportunity that you give us together with our customers, our MSME, so that we can talk, we can have a farm and learn today on the economic outlook and the business opportunities that are in 2021. As we start, we pray for your leaders, we pray for your insights. You help us to have a very successful webinar. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give thanks. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Uh, and good morning again to all. Welcome to our first uh, webinar 2021. This is a partnership between Cooperative Bank and uh, IFC. And uh, to our customers, I think uh, just just before I go to my to my presentation, is to really welcome you all and to say that uh, the pandemic, the, the COVID-19 pandemic has changed the way that we view the business operations. And I believe that's why we are meeting in this, this, kind, of, uh, this kind of meeting, online meetings. And uh, it's a new normal in terms of the, the engagements that you'll be having or through. Most of organizations, including the MSMEs and the people, the people, the people that are, are tuned here today, I think, I believe you have to, to prioritize, you have to prioritize our processes. And I think uh, even for us as, as, as a bank, we are given to prioritize, and that's why we are meeting online. Uh, last year, that is 2020, after COVID came in, we had to actively facilitate a lot of customer engagements. And we, we specifically ran about 23 forums, and I, I think we'll be sharing that about it. We have issues in terms of MSME sustainability, and uh, I think uh, the, the MSME customers, I think, would even be in a better position to speak about that uh, for, for my end. Uh, we, we set new models in terms of decision decision making, new new uh, innovative models in terms of decision making, and I think that is also based on, on uh, a lot of in, even uh, corporate organisations and even the, the, at, at the MSME level. But the bigger thing is that um, uh, the leveraging of the digital channels in terms of, uh, due to the challenges of, 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 of the physicality, the meetings that we used to hold previously, and even the delivery on products and services, I, I think we had, uh, we, we, had, we, had, uh, we had a challenge. But, but specifically, what did we do as Core Bank? I, I would want just to highlight a few, a few things. I know we shared this in the course of uh, webinars that we ran last year, but just to highlight a few things. Huh? Uh, in what on what we did as as, as a bank, and uh, I think this one, as speaking to my customers, is just to, to to give you that comfort in terms of the the, the support that we offered in 2020 for for, 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 our, for our customers, and the commitment that we'll continue to offer this into 2021. I think the first thing, which was around March March April 2020, uh, 2020 was the communication, and we saw a lot of. Uh, uh, he virtually engaged every customer, every MSMB customer in cooperative bank, got a call, got a visit from, from RMs just to find out how they were doing and the impact of the COVID-19 to, 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 in, in their business. I, I think that was, uh, and I got very full feedback from our customers telling us what he had done as, as a bank. Uh, we had this online webinars, just as I said earlier, and uh, we, we specifically did that about, uh, about 14 in, in those few months of, of 2020. Uh, we went sector wise. I think we ran one for contractors. We ran one for school. We had some general ones, and I think the impact was very good in terms of the engagements we had uh, with our customers. But the bigger thing and uh, what what we are looking for in terms of webinars was the connection and uh, the feedback, and of course learning from each other. And I think we picked a lot of a lot of learning points even at at, at, uh, at the MSME level, internationally. There, I remember our team in IOC shared a lot of. Uh, a lot of the experiences from out there, and whatever they had picked, because they had the opportunity to interact with uh, with several se se several several MS MSMEs out there. And the, the bigger thing that we did as a bank was the credit support in terms of the loans, which I think we still we continue to offer, still our commitment. And this was uh, to say we supported our customers through repayment holidays, we supported through restructures, and most of all is that we also supported uh, through through new facilities for those who had uh, borrowing needs. I think it was it was critical to, to, to support them at, 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 that, at, that, at that moment. And still our commitment remains that we we'll continue supporting supporting um, MSMEs for those who are here. We we'll continue supporting you on that train. Uh, the other bigger thing that we did was retooling our relationship managers. 
And this was just to enable them engage with yourselves. And in the course of the discussion, we'll be saying how we continue retooling so that uh, we continue engaging in this kind of kind of discussions. And even where we'll, uh, where we will do physical discussions, I think we have a better uh, relationship manager for you as, as an MSME now. Uh, digitization, I, I may not leave without, uh, I may not uh, talk about without commenting about digitization because we did review and even enhanced our digital channels, the M corrections, the, 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 the COP, COP online, I think we revamped the COP online around that time. So, so there was a lot of, a lot of digitization that, uh, that happened and enhancement of the channels just to enable our customers uh, transact and uh, reduce that physicality that I think uh, was, was part of the, of, of the, of the health commitments. The other thing was the issue of um, the, the continuous hard holding of our MSMEs and we still continue to that. Coming to 2021, and I, I, I think this is the this is a discussion now that uh, I think I want to go through my first slide, is that uh, as a bank, we are still committed to supporting our MSMEs thrive during this period, and uh, even as, as, we, as we go forward. I would want to mention here, and uh, for the benefit of the MSMEs here, that our vacuity of about 23 billion, basically you mark for yourselves in terms of supporting the businesses on, on, uh, on comeback and even the, the expansion. So take advantage of that kitty, 23 billion, that uh, cooperative bank got from ISC to support the MSMEs in the, in, in, the, in the business comeback and the expansion. We have reviewed our processes in terms of the process loan processing and uh, we, are processing, we are promising a quick turnaround time and even the relationship management that I talked of, the digital channels that I talked of, we have enhanced our um, our, our offering, our credit offering on uh, on mobile. And right now, as, as, as an MSME, you can access up, up to 2 million on mobile. And I think those are the things that you'll be saying. How then do you, do, do, do you visit your branch manager? How do you get to it? I, I think there is also a powerful one that has come through the government of Kenya. And uh, cooperative bank and uh, some other institutions, some other financial institutions, we partnered with the government of Kenya in terms of a credit guarantee, and this is purely to support the MSMEs again in comeback. And uh, through your branches, I think the, the, the branch managers will be sharing, will be sharing the, the URLs. Will also be telling you about that. We also have the trainings which we commit to continue to doing the training, the forums that we are having and even the kind of webinars that we are, we are talking of. And if the economy, if, if it's open up even internationally, I think our commitment this year is that we'll also do business trips for, for our customers. And last but not least is information dissemination that we'll continue doing through the MSME portal. And uh, of course, our websites and the social media. For today's discussion, we have a very interesting uh, topic which uh, we chose basically to, 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 to have a review. Being the first meeting, we have uh, the bank economist, Anton Muri, who will be speaking to us. And uh, the discussion we want to focus on, focus on is economic outlook and the opportunities that will be there in 2021 from the, from the, from the bank perspective. My request to the team is uh, let's actively participate through the chat box. In, in case you have any questions, you have any clarifications, let's, let's, uh, let's actively participate. Because I have seen that Muri has very good uh, insights in terms of how we do business into, into 2021. After Anthony Muri, we'll be having uh, Sarah, and I know most of us interacted with Sarah last, last year from ISC, and she will also be breaking down the economic outlook. How, how, how does it apply to, to, to the local market? Sarah will also be coming briefly to break it down. And after that, I'll be coming in to offer, rather to, 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 to give our commitment to the MSME in terms of in terms of the offerings that we have. Basically, in addition to what, 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 what I've said, eh? I realized I didn't introduce myself as I go to Anthony Muri. My, my name is Moses Getau. I, I head the business banking department, supporting the needs of all MSMEs in the bank and also asset finance as a product. And at this juncture, I would want to invite Anthony to take it over from me. So, Karibu, Anthony. Uh, good morning, all. Thanks a lot, Moses. And thanks uh, again for your introduction. Uh, we would like to welcome you to today's webinar. I'm sure it will be one of uh, uh, several that we'll be doing this year and maybe years to come. 
Moses uh, Gitao is the head of uh, business banking, has obviously given uh, the commitment uh, by the bank uh, to the SME community. And uh, for us, I'm sure as SMEs, what matters is uh, whether the environment will actually be conducive uh, for those commitments to actually filter through uh, in our businesses. Uh, obviously, remembering that uh, what is key for us as SMEs is how the bottom line uh, gets affected. Uh, how will our numbers look like uh, come December 31st uh, this year? So given that, I think I'll delve uh, briefly in the next couple of minutes uh, through some slides, which are obviously uh, backed by some uh, data and useful information to actually decipher through the, the operating environment in the, in the next uh, 11, 11 months. Uh, so Karibu Sana, uh, just to kick us off, I think it's convincingly uh, clear and getting clearer by the day actually, uh, that uh, things are looking up uh, from the dip that we witnessed or faced in 2020. Uh, even looking at, uh, at the picture from the global scene and the narrowing down to, to Kenya as a country specific, uh, we've seen most of the key uh, indicators uh, sort of pointing out to increased optimism in 2021 and also looking at uh, some of the key projections and focus that we've had uh, in the last couple of weeks. And the key for us also is the surveys that have been conducted in the last one month. Uh, obviously, most of these point to uh, increased optimism. And so we can only op op uh, uh, look forward to uh, to a better 2021, uh, you know, considering the deep, uh, that we're coming from in, in 2020. Uh, so looking at, at it from the global scene, uh, we see that global growth is expected to rise from uh, the laws of 2020, obviously supported by what we've seen uh, around vaccinations globally. Uh, so if you look at uh, Europe, America, uh, a bit of Asia, uh, they're actually almost hitting uh, close to 20% vaccination levels, uh, and that has boosted global growth. Uh, at the same time, we've also seen, uh, you know, the governments in the developed world and also locally and regionally uh, put in uh, huge fiscal stimulus uh, to sort of jumpstart the economy. And so given this, uh, we are looking at uh, growth covering anything about 5.5% globally in 2021. I think also critical for us as SMEs is that uh, China seems to have taken the advantage of, you know, it was the first in into the pandemic and it's also the first out of the pandemic. Uh, and given that uh, most of the production has actually recovered in China, uh, this obviously gives uh, opportunities for MSMEs to resume their normal importation cycles uh, in 2021. Uh, the other bit uh, is that uh, uh, given the rounds we've seen and also the efforts we've seen on vaccination, uh, then we expect that uh, uh, in a couple of months, this will open up cross-border travel and actually offer some recovery and positive rebound to Kenya's travel and uh, tourism sector uh, value chains. Uh, still lingering around the global scene, uh, we noticed that uh, the projection for oil, uh, crude oil prices, is expected to be uh, gradual, uh, you know, a pickup into an average of $53 a barrel. If you actually compare that uh, to, to last year, last year we had an average of $41.3 a barrel, so it's a slight increment. Uh, but I think important for us is to compare it with the price levels in 2018 and 2019. Uh, so projection is that uh, it will still remain way low or uh, below the average of 2019. Uh, so obviously this means that uh, we would have uh, huge uh, imported inflation shocks in 2021, uh, which obviously would be positive for consumer demand levels. Uh, I think moving closer home and uh, looking at the East African community, and also considering that uh, most of the MSMEs or a great number of the MSMEs in Kenya have this at their target market. 
Uh, so we're looking at uh, positive growth, actually recovery in all the East African uh, uh, community countries. Uh, we have uh, Rwanda, Sudan, Tanzania, and uh, Uganda. And uh, obviously this means that uh, our wider market in this African community uh, will, will resume or recover to near normal uh, levels in 2021. Uh, I think at this juncture we could come closer home and what we notice is that uh, the National Treasury, which, which obviously uh, most of us know it as the Minister of Finance, uh, has projected that uh, 2021 will, will, will actually be a recovery year. So we have a projection of GDP growth of 6.4% uh, in real terms. Uh, this should be seen across most of the sectors. So we have agriculture, the services sector, and industry. And what this does for us as MSMEs is that uh, it will offer opportunity for business uh, to register significant recoveries, either in turnover or sales level. And uh, what we've also witnessed uh, in the last couple of weeks, and especially in January, is that uh, positive externalities in some of the sectors. So we've actually seen, like, for example, the recovery in education has already lifted up activity levels for, for the MSMEs who are in the transport sector. And uh, looking at most of the key sectors, uh, I think from our projection, uh, we actually see that uh, recovery will be across most of the sectors. And uh, what is good for us is that uh, the bank will, in this year, still continue to offer support uh, to entrepreneurs across, uh, across these sectors. So as a bank, uh, we, we are quite open on all the sectors that we have, you know, uh, previously supported you on. And so you, you should be comfortable uh, coming up uh, to us with, with proposals in, in these sectors. Uh, what seems to matter, uh, and I think as we start the year, is how the private sector actually sees, uh, sees the numbers coming up. You know, in the previous slide, we've seen, you know, the government projection. Uh, in this slide, uh, we noticed that uh, the Central Bank of Kenya uh, last last month, actually in, in mid-January, uh, did uh, a you. survey uh, among the private sector uh, to just gauge or measure uh, the level of optimism and where they see things at uh, in, in 2021. And uh, from my chart, if you look keenly, you notice that uh, the level of optimism in January 2021 uh, among the private sector has actually risen to 74% uh, from 47% in July and a very low level of 30% in May 2020, obviously during the, the peak of the pandemic. And uh, the other thing is that uh, if you look at the level which is pessimistic on, on, on uh, economic prospects, this has gone down from 55% in May uh, to a low of 22% in January 2021. Uh, and I think uh, for us, given that uh, this is the private sector, uh, you know, farms that were surveyed, uh, and they almost, you know, very inclusively represent most of the sectors in the, uh, in the, in the, in the, in the country, uh, then we can only hope that uh, this indicates, uh, you know, a turn for better times ahead following the dip in 2020. Uh, for us, there's one sector that really matters and uh, it has huge implication on, on most of the SMEs and it's the manufacturing sector. Uh, so at the same time, at the lobby group, that's Kenya Association of Manufacturers, uh, did a survey on the optimism level of, of the manufacturers in Kenya. And from the numbers, we've, we've seen that uh, this has gone up in January 2021 uh, to you know 52% from a low of 12.4% in, in July. And if you look at the level of pessimism, uh, this has gone down, actually, uh, from a high of 31% to 13%. Uh, so obviously, this offers an opportunity for, for us as MSMEs to to resume our distribution and they also increase uh, increased demand for uh, for manufactured merchandise. 
most of us, you know, have trade either across across the region or uh, are importing, you know, goods uh, uh, from, uh, you know, either China or other countries. So what we've seen in the last uh, few months, especially most of 2020, is that the Kenya shilling has really depreciated across some of the major currencies. Uh, it's We've seen it depreciate uh, against the euro, uh, which, however, was positive because uh, if you look at the trading on, on euro currency, uh, you notice that uh, we are a net exporter on euro. Uh, so meaning that uh, it actually favored us and most, uh, majorly the export, uh, uh, you know, SMEs who are in, uh, in uh, horticultural goods, which added into the European countries. So for that, uh, and also given the projection for the euro to remain strong in 2021, uh, that means that uh, our exporters, especially the horticultural produce exporters, uh, will continue to receive higher earnings uh, in, in 2021. However, if you look at the Kenya shilling, uh, there was a bit of depreciation in, in uh, uh, 2020, uh, which was volatile. Uh, but if you look at the numbers uh, that we've seen uh, in January to date, is that uh, the Kenya shilling against the dollar has now stabilized. And obviously, this will give importers a good focus range, uh, you know, to manage their cash flows. Uh, in, in 2021. Uh, I think speaking of, of, of the euro and other importers, exporters, uh, what looks, uh, I think, encouraging for us is, is that uh, the recent survey showed that uh, most of the cultural, uh, you know, farmers and exporters actually have very good order levels into into the next quarter, into the next three months up to March 2021. So most of them, as we see today, have order levels of at least 90% into March. And obviously this, this points to, uh, to increase the optimism and also positive sentiments. And if you look at this order level, this actually has huge implication positively on, on the cash flow for these exporters. Uh, looking at, at the other commodities, and especially by, by way of summary, uh, so we are looking at uh, the focus for most of the global uh, commodities is that uh, there will be a, a jump in price uh, into 2021. Uh, this obviously includes coffee, tea, barley, maize, and wheat. And so what this means is that uh, for the MSMEs in, the, in this value chain, it means that uh, the earnings will be higher in 2021. Obviously, uh, there's a caveat here. If we look at Q1 uh, weather forecast, uh, it might be a bit dry, but uh, what that means is that uh, the farmers who manage to export will actually earn uh, higher commodity prices. And so that might positively impact their, uh, their cash flows uh, moving into most of 2021. I think most of us are aware and have actually witnessed uh, a, a huge shift in the hotel uh, industry. So what we've seen uh, since COVID struck is that uh, there has been a shift in the clientele uh, sort of uh, formation or matrix uh, in the hotels industry. So before COVID, uh, these hotels relied 64% uh, of their cash flows on, on foreign guests. Uh, during COVID and especially the months of October and, and November, uh, we've seen this come down to about 14%. Uh, so I think uh, given the projection of this sector, it will take about two to three years to fully recover. Uh, one that means, or the call we would make for us as MSMEs, MSMEs is that uh, uh, there's need for us to also change or, or to tweak our business uh, swiftly uh, in, in the medium term to actually reflect uh, this change and maybe tweak our products and services to uh, to to focus more on the on the local or, or domestic uh, guests. Uh, I think looking at the way COVID struck and especially uh, the period March to July. Uh, it almost reminded uh, most of us, either as uh, consumers or owners of business, 
uh, it reminded us of the priority goals for Kenyans. And if you look at uh, most of the surveys that have been done, and especially the most recent, which is uh, a fin access survey of 2019, uh, you notice that uh, from this survey, most of the focus, and especially the priority goals uh, for most Kenyans have, have been shown to be education, health, food, uh, land and housing, and also improvement of business or farming. Uh, so I think the call here for us is that uh, even as we tweak our products, uh, uh, the bank will, will still continue to support and, uh, you as entrepreneurs uh, to actually deliver on on some of the tweaking that you'll be able to uh, to do with uh, with your customers or on your business uh, enterprises. Uh, I think you'll agree with me that uh, even as we do whatever we do, be it be uh, you know production of goods, uh, distribution of goods, or provision of services here and there, uh, what matters is 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 the end game the end game that's the consumer at the end buyer and uh, i think looking at the population dynamics in kenya uh, you notice that about 52 percent of the kenyan population is actually below the age of 20 years and further to that uh, you notice that uh, about 81 percent of the kenyan population is actually aged below 40 years uh, so the call here is that uh, as msmes here it's critical to be mindful of this uh, as we decide on our or design our products and services, and also as we design our our marketing uh, goals and uh, you know uh, processes. Uh, looking at where we are coming from, that's 2020. Uh, the sort of agents or you know environment we have. Obviously, we have we've seen the global picture. Uh, we, we've seen the local picture, and we have a government. Uh, there are some key risks that we may, we may need to, to mitigate against uh, in this period. And uh, some of them include uh, the issue on taxation. Uh, if, you, if you look at the government numbers, the, you notice that the government uh, currently has some shortfalls in, 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 in the revenue. And so we expect them to actually go after most of the tax leakages. And so as business uh, entrepreneurs, uh, we does need to attain and maintain an up-to-date tax compliance. Uh, so in a sense, that will give us peace. And it will also maintain you know, the good relationships uh, that our business enterprises have, have with the government. And I think speaking of the government also, uh, given you know the shortfalls in revenue, I think we are likely to see a, a bit of delay in payments uh, this and also maybe next year. And also, so given this, I think the call here for us as MSMEs is actually to diversify our business engagement with government, uh, sort of not to put our our heads in, in in one basket, so to speak. And also, as we do that, we try to. To match our contracts with, with, with the fiscal calendar for, of the government for quicker and easier payments. Uh, and I think uh, in, in line with that, we've also seen most of the parastatos now have, have instructions and have actually gone on the ground to claim some of their graft properties. And so as MSMEs, uh, we'll need to, to increase our due diligence as we acquire or either business premises or other properties uh, in the current season. And I think talking of seasons, uh, we are almost getting into the election cycle. And so that means uh, we'll need to put our antennas a bit higher uh, because in the market, there'll be quite, quite attractive and also uh, sometimes fraudulent business deals during this election cycle. And so uh, for us, it's, it's good that we are able to pick uh, or to highlight some of this and maybe uh, know how to mitigate uh, against such risks. Uh, the other point uh, maybe to to make a call for is that uh, in the recent past we've seen uh, opportunities outside the main areas of, of strength or speciality uh, for us as, as SMEs. 
And so that has meant that we've we've allocated you know resources out of what used to be our core lines of business uh, into other areas where we're just sort of trying uh, not really knowing uh, the ropes quite well. And so this has meant that uh, it has actually taken away resources from what we know how to do well to something else that we are uh, we are we are obviously trying. And uh, lastly, on, on the risk to look out for is that uh, the risk of overtrading. So uh, what we've seen in the last few business uh, reviews is that whenever MSMEs uh, try to buy it more than they can chew, uh, most of them have ended, you know, stretching their resources beyond the optimum level. And so what happens at the end of the day or at the end of the period is that uh, the SME is left, uh, you know, with stock that are not sold or not able to, you know, sell quickly. Or if you are, you know, into into contracts or offering services, uh, at the end of the period, you have, you know, several uh, incomplete projects and none of them is actually uh, very near completion. And this obviously will dry, uh, dry out your cash flows. I, I think with that, uh, I'll, I'll invite Sarah uh, to take us through the micro view and their uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Anthony, uh, for that very comprehensive uh, outlook. Uh, we're talking about economic outlook. And uh, I think we cannot say that uh, we don't know. That's why we are having these sessions. And this is a great way uh, to start this year. Before I go uh, too far, I really uh, just want to pick up from where Moses said that this uh, this this initiative is really a partnership between uh, IFC and Cooperative Bank. And Cooperative Bank did uh, very, very well. We enjoyed partnering with you last year and were able to uh, make quite a lot of strides. And we hear that feedback uh, coming from uh, from the customers, the impact that we're able to make. Before I go far, let me uh, int uh, recognize the presence of my team leader, uh, Stella Masinde. And Stella, I'd just like to kindly ask you to say hello to our participants uh, this morning, joining us from the WebEx and also the YouTube. Stella, over to you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Good morning, everybody. Welcome again to this uh, series that uh, we are partnering with Corp Bank. Um, I'm sure it's going to be another good um, uh, presentation. And uh, just to ask you all to just sit back and relax and enjoy yourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stella. And uh, as you know, uh, IFC is charged with private sector development. So it's all about looking at the private sector and seeing how we can add value. And uh, last year, uh, we all agree, was a very difficult year, uh, 2020, because of COVID. And we talk about COVID, we also talk about the aftermath of, of COVID. And as uh, part of our responsibility uh, in terms of strengthening uh, engagements, especially for business people across the board, uh, we were able to take on quite a, a, a number of engagements uh, with the different banks uh, here locally uh, in Kenya, Cooperative Bank uh, being one of them. And also in the region, I was looking at, uh, at the optim optimism uh, graph that uh, Anthony was talking about. Uh, and uh, it talks about pro, uh, you know projections in in the eastern africa uh, region the kenya you know kenya uganda uh, tanzania rwanda burundi and southern sudan and i'm pleased to report that uh, when we look at the region uh, we did have uh, very uh, quality engagements in uh, in four four out of six of those uh, countries you know just having conversations with the business people and we will all agree that uh, that uh, really it's the same across the board uh, and even internationally. So there are a lot of uh, insights that we can take uh, going forward that will help us to better arm ourselves. We're able to uh, engage here in East Africa, also in West Africa, and also in, in South Africa. And so we are, we are, we are, we are I, I want to um, uh, uh, validate uh, what uh, Anthony was talking about that yes, indeed, there's a lot of optimism, uh, things are looking up, uh, but the more important thing is what are we going to do as people so that we can position ourselves uh, to, 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 to move forward uh, in what we are calling uh, the post-COVID uh, dispensation. 
so if there's somebody uh, joining us uh, perhaps today for the first time, I'm also a business person like you. Uh, so uh, as I as I continue with these engagements, I'm I'm going to put on the hat that we are most of us are putting on, and uh, and you know they say that the wearer of the shoe uh, knows where it pinches, and uh, just looking at experiences, drawing from uh, uh, the experiences that we have had, and also complementing uh, what uh, the economist uh, uh, economist Anthony has taken us through, uh, I think there are great days uh, ahead of us. Uh, next slide, please. So I just want to uh, take the shortest time possible just to talk about four uh, key things. When we talk about the economic outlook, we are looking at the different sectors. We are looking at the priority areas. We are also see, uh, seeing the risks, you know, and how to position our businesses so that we are not, uh, you know, taken up uh, or, or adversely uh, affected. Uh, as we as, as as we look at those uh, priority areas and the focus areas and the levels of you know optimism uh, uh, you know and the opportunities really this is a conversation about opportunities and uh, it's one thing to see the opportunity but another thing to be able to tap into it and uh, when we try to position ourselves as business people uh, it matters uh, about planning come into play. And if you think about it, exactly this time last year, we had prepared very beautiful plans, strategic plans and business plans ready to face 2020. And then lo and behold, COVID, uh, you know, uh, caught up with us. And so the, the big question business people were asking is, uh, is it worth planning? And the, the answer we, we, we were giving last year and we continue to give this year is yes. Planning is one of those uh, components that you cannot ignore, you cannot delegate, and you can't say uh, that, you know, because the, 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 the economic environment is fluid, the business environment is fluid, uh, that exempts us from planning. No, we must continue to plan. And if there's something that COVID taught us, especially our experiences in 2020, was uh, of course agility, uh, of course adaptability. You know, trying to bend in the direction of the wind. But one of the things uh, I would say as a consultant, uh, one of the greatest takeaway uh, for us as business people was about the ability uh, to think out of the box, to look at these adverse, uh, you know, uh, uh, situations that we are going through, and not to give up, but to say, how can we work around this? So we are talking about. Uh, the, you know, continuing to, to to adapt, looking at what's going on in the business environment and uh, and making uh, plans uh, to move forward. Because as business people, we must continue to move forward. And so the question is, uh, you know, people may ask, um, should we have these plans or shouldn't we have these plans? And uh, the answer is yes, we must have these plans. But because of the changing nature of uh, of, of uh, you know, business, uh, doing business, new ways of doing business, thinking out of the box and so on. It's really uh, in, important for us to realize as business people that whatever plan you have, you have written it down. And we always emphasize the need for you, for us as business people to write down. Many people say, I know, Sarah, what I want to do. It's, it's all in my mind. But it's very important to write it down. And that's where these strategy documents uh, come into into play. Now, whether you call it a strategic plan, whether you call it a business plan, the fact of the matter is that at the end of the day, you have a document that has the blueprints that will help you, will give you direction as a business person. Where am I going? How do I seize the opportunities that where, you know, a lot of investments have gone into giving us these uh, projections, but the question is, what are you going to do about it? So those strategy documents are important. But I want to uh, emphasize that they are not cast on stone. Long gone are the days where we'll say, okay, I have my strategy. And I think some, many of us as business people are guilty of this. You take that document, which for example, was prepared by a consultant and you put it in a drawer somewhere and you lock it up. It was just a strategy document, not anymore. We need to constantly look at those plans and see, how are they uh, reflecting the reality of what is taking place uh, in the business environment? 
is this a plan that I can confidently talk, uh, you know, talk to uh, somebody else about, maybe a prospective financial? You know, when we talk about business opportunities, you may find that you're not able to seize it on your own. So maybe it calls for some kind of partnership with somebody else. So those strategy documents have to be clearly written out, but they must be constantly looked at to uh, to, to see, it. you know, they need to be reviewed. Long gone are the days where we say, you know, we're going to review this uh, at the end of the quarter. We can't wait that long, especially in these volatile times that we are, you know, we, we are going through. So we need to have the, have, have the plan, yes, and that's very important because these are the blueprints uh, that, uh, uh, you know, prescribe or, or define the way we will do uh, business. But you need to constantly look at it and see what is changing. How can I, um, what opportunities am I seeing? What are, uh, advantages do I have? And how can I change that and revise that document to reflect the reality of what is going on? So we are saying, yes, we must have those plans. And perhaps there's somebody who is uh, thinking, you know, Sarah, you, you're talking about uh, strategic plans, this strategy document, strategic plans and a business, uh, uh, you know, plan. So what's the difference? Maybe as a business person, as an SME, I have a business plan, but I don't have this strategy plan. Is this something that I need to be concerned about? Uh, you know, what is the way forward? So just to clear uh, the anxiety or maybe to remove uh, the panic, I just want to uh, give you one or two differences between a strategic plan and the business plan. A strategic plan gives you um, the, the it, it gives your strategy direction as you as you go into 2020, uh, 2021 and beyond. You're asking yourself, we as an, uh, as an organization, what is our strategic direction? What are our priority areas? What are, what are we going to focus on that is unique to us as a business? Uh, but on a business plan on the other side, this is where I think most of us uh, fit in. This is a document that uh, gives you more of a strate uh, an, operational, an, operation, an operational direction. How, what are the nitty gritties? How will I, uh, you know, put this plan in place that will help me, you know, to, to move forward? Uh, when we talk about strategic plans, we're talking about businesses that are more established, uh, businesses that have been around in the game longer. Uh, so those, those businesses maybe have more branches, they have more shops, they have, you know, more departments, more product lines and so on. So there, because of the complexity, we tend to talk about strategic plans. But a business plan um, for many small, uh, you know, uh, SMEs actually, uh, many do not have uh, strategic plans because of the of of, of the simpli simplicity, uh, so to speak, uh, between you know uh, the bigger, big, bigger uh, and more established organizations, as opposed to somebody who is just an entrepreneur. You're going into business; it's it's a new idea, uh, maybe for startups. So, if you're in the category of startups, you know, uh, new organizations, then we'd be talking about a strategic plan. I mean, uh, sorry, a, a business plan. And then uh, strategy plans tend to give us more priority in terms of resources, our people, our money. How do we move from where we are in 2020, uh, now going to 2021? How, how do we move the business? Where do we want to go? So you're, you're looking at that uh, sort of big picture and trying to tie in uh, what uh, Anthony uh, has been telling us, uh, you know, in order to move uh, the organization forward. But when we talk about business plans, it's it's more of a structured ideas. This is what I have in mind. Uh, this is what is going to define de define my business, uh, you know, and and take me forward. When we talk about business plans, it's about looking at an opportunity, seeing that opportunity, convincing yourself about the feasibility of that uh, opportunity and what you're going to do in order to seize that opportunity. But when we talk about strategic plans, it's more of, you know, our competitive advantages. It's more, you know, futuristic and so on. I was involved in a, in a project for eight years, uh, uh, which IFC was, was handling uh, with the Africa Development Bank. And this was all about uh, trying to assist business people's, people, SMEs, to develop, uh, sorry, a uh, uh, previous slide. Uh, to, 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 de to, to develop, uh, you know, uh, business plans. And what we found out is that for many SMEs, when we when we're trying to guide them on how they can prepare business plans so as to seize funding, 
they told us that actually this is a document that I have realized I need for myself so that I can run my business better. So it depends on what exactly your needs are. And as we talk about business plans, as we talk about strategic plans, it is very, very important. And this is one of the big things that we learned from COVID. For you as a business person to sort yourself constantly, because things are changing in the business environment, you need to look at yourself. What are my strengths? What is this that we do and do very well? What are our weaknesses? And you need to be honest about your, your business. You know, maybe we are new. Maybe we are not as established. Maybe we don't have access to finance. And that's why we're having these conversations. And then looking at the opportunities. And as we're thinking about opportunities, the outlook that we've been given is really fantastic. It gives us direction on how we can tap into those opportunities uh, that, 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 that are actually available for us. And then, of course, we're also looking at the threats. Uh, Anthony told us about, you know, the threat about, you know, tax compliance or, or non-compliance. Uh, so you need to, my uh, encouragement to you is that as we go through, as we start 2021 and, and, and we go through the year, please make it a practice to conduct a SWOT analysis on yourself often. This is not something that you say consultants, you know, will, will do for me. You need to be, why do I say that? Because there's a lot of competition in the marketplace. And so if you're, if you're going to survive, you need to think out of the box. You need to be creative. You need to, but you need to look at yourself internally and also externally. And that's what that's what analysis is about. Uh, is about. The next slide. Next slide. Next slide. Uh, in the next slide, I, I want to just uh, go back to uh, something which I, I thought was very insightful uh, that Anthony mentioned. He gave us a, a lot of statistics. Uh, but the one that stood out to me is, uh, I'm just uh, restating this verbatim. Uh, verbatim. About 52% of Kenya's population is below the age of 20 years. Over Basically, the majority, more than half of the population of Kenya is actually aged below the, uh, you know, below uh, 20. This, uh, these, are, these are the people we call uh, post-millennials. Can you imagine? That's a very important statistic. The second statistic, we are told 81% of the country's population is actually aged below 40 years. We are looking at a country... Uh, which some people say, you know, uh, the hustler nation or whichever way you look at it, 81% of our population is actually aged below 40 years. Now think about the people who, uh, uh, you know, are, are economically engaged, people who can go out there, work, get money, because those are the people you're targeting. As business people, we are targeting the share of the wallet of that customer, i.e. that person needs to have the money to be able to buy the products and the services that you're offering. And then uh, there's also that last statistic. In a nutshell, what we are saying is, uh, just thinking about those statistics that Anthony has shared, 70% of the people who make buying decisions are not the people with the money in the pocket. This is very important for you as a business person. You need to know who is the buyer. Who is the user? Who is actually buying in terms of, you know, exchanging money for my products and services? But who is the user? And who is the influencer? And I just want to, I want you to just take a moment and think about this because this is very important for you as a business person. Maybe you are in the fashion industry and you're selling shoes, you're selling clothes, maybe hairstyles and so on. Even for me, I have, uh, I have uh, 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 big children. And I cannot just go out and buy, you know, uh, whether it is shoes, whether it is clothes. And so I can't, I actually can't buy for them because they are, I am the one with the money, but they are actually the ones of the users. I mean, the, the ones who are actually using those, uh, those uh, things. And I wouldn't go out of my way maybe to buy something that, uh, that, that I think, you know, maybe culturally and maybe age and so on. I would think that it's not appropriate. But we can't run away from this because of those statistics that Anthony has, has shared. 
for you as a business person, you need to think about what is trending. What, how can you package? How can I package my products, my services in a way that will, 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 will mesmerize this, this population of 20 years and below? Because they are the ones who make decisions. Think about furniture. You know, we have these conversations with my daughter all the time. And in as much as she is not the one removing the money, she's saying, no, the trends are, when we look at, uh, you know, social media, which I'm going to talk about uh, in, in the last slide, in the, in the next slide, these are people who say, um, this is what they define. Let's put it that way. They define what is trending, what will move, what will not move. Think about technology, electronic gadgets. Who is buying you? Who is making those decisions? These people aged in that uh, age group. These are very interesting statistics. So whether it's jewelry, whether it is eateries, think about it. When you're making decisions to go out, at the end of the day, it's not about you and me. It's about having consultation with these guys and asking them, where do we go and eat and so on. And you can go think about, you know, holiday destination, even hospitals. I've seen that there are some of us uh, on the call uh, this morning who are in the, in, in the business of providing uh, health care. Who is the buyer? Who is the user? Who is the influencer? Is it those uh, insurance, um, is it the insurance uh, companies and so on? So these are things that we really need to put at the fourth, uh, you know, at, at the top of our minds. Who is that customer? Where are they? What age? What gender? What do they want? And how can I, as a business person, position myself to, you know, uh, you know uh, sell my products or services in a way that will be appealing uh, to those people because they call the shots at the end of the day. Uh, next slide. One of the other things that COVID has taught us is that we must go digital. This is not just a buzzword. This is not, uh, you know, just something that is either good to do or, or not good to do. You cannot say I'm, I'm, I'm in that age where I really, I don't understand these things. Not anymore because you are in business. And if you're running a business, you need, you cannot ignore uh, you know, social media, the effect and impact of social media. And so for us as business people, we must ride. Uh, I think last year, 2020, we were, you know, trying to understand more about the social media and, 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 and the importance it has, you know, uh, in our businesses. And when we talk about platforms, which ones? There's Facebook, there's Pinterest, there's Instagram, there's Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, WhatsApp, and so on. And we had a conversation uh, about this last year. Uh, which I do not uh, wish to repeat. Again, going back to that statistic that Anthony gave us, who are the influencers or who are the users of our products and services? And where are they? They are in the internet. And so for you as a business person, if you're going to survive, if you're going to take advantage of these opportunities uh, that are available to you, you must go to where this young generation is and you have to explain in terms of content, in terms of the value proposition of the products and services that you're offering, you need to be able to convince them because at the end of the day, they are the ones who are convincing us as parents or <laughs> manipulating us to purchase uh, those items. So many, much more I can say, but I just want to leave you with, the, with those four, four tips. As we, as we look at the economic uh, you know, outlook, things are looking up. There are a lot of opportunities and we need to position ourselves. We need to revise our, our, our plans, you know, the blueprints that we had as we were going, you know, into 2021. Now we're in 2021. We have gotten uh, insights, very uh, critical information, which the bank has invested uh, into giving you that information. So the onus is on you as a business person. Go back to those strategy documents, which we're saying are evolving all the time and make whatever adjustments uh, and amendments uh, which are going to favor you so that you can seize these opportunities uh, that are available in the, in, the, in, the, in, in the business environment, not by luck or by flukes, but through intentionality. So that is uh, just a, 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 a few things that I want to talk about in terms of the micro bringing it down uh, to us as uh, business people and how we can position ourselves to to survive and to continue to thrive even post COVID. Uh, thank you very much. And I uh, want to now hand over to Moses uh, who will give us uh, some of the solutions that the bank uh, has for us. Moses, over to you. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sarah. Anthony, thank you also for the presentation. Before I go to the bank uh, offering, I think some key highlights that some 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 key things that are picked uh, from uh, both Sarah and Anthony, and uh, I think the key thing from for us as MSMEs is to say there is that positivity in terms of the economy, the recovery of the economy. I, I think 20, 2021 for for the importers. I think Anthony was very clear to say those guys, those of us importing from China, China has bounced back. So, so I think it's us to get back to to, 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 to to our business. I think the bigger one is also to see the economy. The Kenyan economy is projected to grow at about 6.4. Where, where do you see ourselves as a, as a, where do you see yourself as an MSME? I think that is also key. And uh, the other thing that uh, I think both of those spoke of is uh, the focus on the youth. You've seen our politicians. I believe this is the data they are, they are, they are, they are using to focus on the youth. And uh, for, for us as, as MSMEs, how then we position ourselves to ensure that we tap that market. I think that's profound in terms of the, the population distribution, the, 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 who are the influencers there. I, I think uh, it goes without saying, for us as, an, as, as MSMEs, it's an area that we also need to ask ourselves, how we focus on that, on, on that customer segment as, as, as a, for us in terms of growth. I think the other takeout is the digital. I know I'd share that. Digital, people are more digital. How do you leverage on the digital channels in terms of your day-to-day -day engagement with, with, with your customers in terms of the sales? And in the course of the in the course of the year, and I know last year we did run a lot of courses in a lot of uh, webinars focusing on on selling digitally. How do you sell digitally? Those are the things for us that we need to keep asking ourselves. And I think as we structure the next uh, the next webinars. Is a, is an area that uh, that will be of interest for us to to just explore and share with our, with our customers the digital setting. Now coming to, to to cooperative bank, the offering and our commitment to the MSMEs is to say we have three solutions, three needs for, for for you as an MSME, and I would want to just address a, a, few, a few things in terms of how then we we'll address those needs as a bank. And the first need is the transactional need. Any business requires a transactional account. The sales that you do today, day to day basis, the payments that you make out there, you require transactional accounts so that uh, that money goes into the account and out of the account if you are to pay. So, so as, as a bank, we have uh, three packages a gold package, a silver package, and a bronze package. All these are current accounts depending on the level of the customer. The gold package is for the higher customer setting up to setting above 100 million in terms of. Uh, uh, annual, 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 uh, annual sales. Eh? Silver is uh, targeting a customer who sells up to uh, from 10 million up to 100 million in terms of annual sales. And bronze is for that customer who is coming up. I, I think some, most of us, are, 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 most of us perhaps will be at that level, but it's a very good package as an entry point for a micro customer that is coming up and going. So, so all these packages then come with uh, what you call the payment and collection solutions. What do these solutions do? They enable you as, a, as, 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 as an MSME pay online or, or pay using a check. They, they enable you do the collections. Once you sell, how do your customers pay? They don't have to pay cash. I know we still, we still are, we are a cash economy, but I think what COVID taught us is that we have to go digital. So as a bank, we've invested highly on, um, on, on, on the digital platforms. We have a, 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 a MCOP cash that is on, on phone, access on phone. You can do virtually everything on MCOP cash, including borrowing we talked over earlier. We have M collection, which is also on, on, on uh, it helps you in terms of in terms of in terms of the corrections. We have the COP online. And uh, last year as a bank, we really spent time in terms of revamping our COP online. And uh, that's a that's a, a tool that you help you transact and even send money out there even to, to, to your customers, meaning you don't have to you don't have to, 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 to move funds, uh, whatever, to move with cash and water. Mm -hmm. It will help you in terms of interacting with the bank, the balance inquiries, the statements. Those things, uh, you can get them there. You don't have to physically walk to the branch to get, to get your, your, your statements. I think the other thing is, uh, is uh, the, the agent. And this, what you are saying is that we brought the bank closer to you as a, as a, as a, as, as, as a customer. It's within the estates. Within the whatever the the the, 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 the business corridors, the malls, and all those all those areas, Cop Kwajirani agents help you in terms of those. If you have cash sales, if you have to do the trans, 
any deposit and 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 uh, and withdraws, it happens at the at the COP Wajirani. And you see that is basically a bank like a, like any, any cooperative bank that you visit. POS machines, either what you call the merchants, also enables you your customers pay and and do the corrections. And last but not least is a Ripa Nine Pesa. And this, what you are saying is that Ripa Nine Pesa is, is is big, and the payments to on Ripa Nine Pesa can be directed. Be, be terminated into your transactional account, as I said earlier. I, I think there has the, the, the need that uh, an MSME comes with after you start your business, after you have made your you've made your transactional account, after you have done your corrections and, and, and payments. I think the last need that comes is, is, is a reading need. And I know most of you have seen a number of questions that we also be addressing shortly. Those reading needs that come there, as a bank, we structured ourselves in terms of uh, in terms of helping you address those needs through several facilities and for today i would just want to highlight the four number one is that we have unsecured drones term loans for, for an msm is, to, is operating in cooperative bank we have secured drones that and unsecured can either come as a term loan as an or as an overdraft we have secure term loans and again that helps you as, as, as a business in terms of uh, in terms of uh, maybe, maybe investment and uh, and working capital i talked of access on uh, of business loans through mobile so we have up to million that you can access as a business person if you have an account with cooperative bank. In terms of investment capital, we have what we call asset financing, motor vehicle or machinery. I think that is uh, also the have partnered with key dealers in the country to just help in terms of of, uh, of, of, of facilitating our MSMEs on uh, where, where they have need for motor vehicles or movement of goods from point A to point B. And uh, we also have mortgages. I think this is emotive. A mortgage is uh, that that investment that uh, you'll be making either for a, for a, for a personal house or or or, or whatever or, or maybe some some rentals those are or, or even a business a business premises so mortgages again come in we have those those investments as a bank and last we have trade solutions so if you have to if you are an importer you are an exporter we have those solutions that will help you what what you call uh, what you talk of guarantee and locally those who purchase locally we have guarantees we have bid boats if you are to bid, to bid for a for 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 a for a, for a, for, a, for a tender, we have performance bonds because they come in after you got, you get the tender. You have to demonstrate the repayment ability. The bank, as an MSME, the bank is there to stand for you, just to say that uh, you have that, that ability to to deliver. So so those are basically the, the, the key things. But I may not highlight everything here, uh, just to say that uh, that uh, uh, we we have relationship managers in the branches. We have branch managers. You can, as a, as a, as an MSME, as a customer, you can visit any of those branches across across uh, the, the country. The next uh, is now the call to action. Uh, the, sorry, this this is now the the, the 20 to 2021 MSME activities, the, the things that we want to run, and just inviting uh, the, the MSMEs here to say that every Thursday we've committed to be running such a forum, just to share knowledge to, to share. Uh, to, to, to get feedback and more 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 is to run from each other so every Thursday and you'll be getting an invite through through our digital channels through your regional relationship managers and also the branch managers we would want also to go regional and this again we want to come closer to the to, to yourselves at, at the branch and this one will, will, will uh, I think this year we are committed to regional so the people of Mombasa have seen a number of, of us of us logging for Mombasa. I, I think I would want to start there uh, as, as a region in terms of the engagements that we'll be having shortly through. Uh, that this will happen through the branches that you, you, you are in. We have um, MSME articles and information. Those are available in our website. Please visit the CoBank website. You will see a lot of information, including the recordings that uh, that happened uh, in 2020. You see this, this kind of webinars. And even th those uh, that we are picked from out there, uh, we we'll continue in terms of the customer visits from the branches and uh, even the social media, uh, social media and uh, business tips that uh, we continuously give to our MSME. So those are just a few com a few commitments, activities that we'll be making in 2021. Moving to my last slide, as be uh, before, we go to the the the, the Q and A, is to ask ourselves uh, after this discussion, what is a call to action? And uh, I, I know uh, it's just to say, number one, I, I want to that uh, you engage your relationship managers or the branch manager near you. If you are if you, if you are if you are logged in and you are not a customer to CoBank, I request that you also join in CoBank. Visit visit uh, 
visit the branch near, near to you. Uh, you'll have a relationship manager. We normally call them a business banker and a branch manager. Those are the people who help you in terms of the journey as an MSME. I would want those who are also into leverage on uh, our payment and transaction solutions just as I shared in terms of making your payments. As you register through COP online, MCOP cash, M collection, it helps you, it will help you in terms of collection and even connecting to your customers. And it's a very secure and safe way of receiving your payments and also making uh, receiving your collections as also and also making your payments. And uh, I, I think the other thing is uh, identify and present your businesses to your relationship manager. The, the, the optimism that you have been given by, by the economist here is to say the economy is coming back. How do you position yourself? Sarah has asked us, have we reviewed our, our business plans? How then do you position yourself? Uh, it's important that uh, you, you present uh, your needs to the relationship manager and the branch manager. And I think last thing is to say, let's keep attending to the, these webinars. We pick something and we, we continuously share. We value the feedback that you give us. And, uh, and I, I think for me, it's, it's, a, it's a forum that you also run from each other. So every Thursday, our commitment is that we have this event from, from Cooperative Bank. And I think finally, it's uh, to ask us to keep safe. Uh, Diana, uh, I would want to pick any questions. I, I think between myself, Anthony and uh, Sarah, I, uh, perhaps you can go to, to the questions that have come through the clarification and also the feedback that uh, we may need to take to take through. Over to you, Diana. Um, thank you very much, Moses. Thank you, Sarah and Anthony. I'll quickly go to uh, comments and uh, feedback received on our YouTube channel. Um, first question is from uh, Paul Theory. Paul is joining us from River Road and his question is on the uh, 23 billion shilling fund for the SMEs. How I wish the bank can tailor uh, or make multiple packages for the different types of business people. That is from Paul Theory. And then uh, we have uh, Samuel Waweru. Samuel says uh, the information shared on this webinar is priceless. Um, we also have Samuel Kimani asking about the same 23 billion SME uh, loan. Will it be secured or unsecured? And then uh, finally, from YouTube, we have uh, Grace. Grace is joining us from Kiambu, and her question is why are some of the fees charged? which are non-refundable, like the insurance while accessing an overdraft. So kindly take those questions and then we'll cross over to WebEx. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. And uh, just to start off, us off in terms of the questions, uh, thank you, Paul and Samuel, for that question of the availability of the 23 fund. As I said earlier, we have a fund for, to, to, for, for M uh, MSMEs. 23 billion, uh, I think uh, we go from IOC, as I said earlier. It's available in all our branches and uh, to, to our MSME customers, the customers that are in CoBank as MSME customers. Uh, in terms of the structure, uh, it's available either as secured or unsecured, as I, as, as I, as I, as I shared earlier, depending with the structure of the, the, the MSME. So the, the, the details of that are available at the, at the branch. And uh, I would request uh, Paul, uh, Sam. Uh, I heard Paul is in River Road. I didn't hear where Sam is. Uh, I think uh, Paul, Sam, visit, visit, visit your branch manager, or your, your your business banker. That will be the person who will give you the integrities, but it's available to MSMEs. That is a commitment I can give. It's in several packages, in several forms. It uh, could be either an asset financing, but the bigger portion for, that we are looking for this time is working capital what would want to share to, to, to bring back your business to 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 to, to, to normal operations as, as, as an MSME. It's available. Uh, the, the, the one of um, of um, of Samuel, again, th thank you. Thank you for that comment of the, the, the prices information that you've shared. Thank you. Thank you for it. I think that's an encouragement to us and we'll continue sharing just to ensure that uh, that uh, our MSMEs are better and even as uh, we also run from, from you. Uh, Grace, uh, the issue of fees uh, charged and insurance. Uh, insurance is a benefit that we pass on to, to an MSME, but, but again, also, uh, since it's not very clear in terms of specifically what, what insurance fees, uh, what, what it is, I would also request that you see, you see them, you also talk to your relationship manager, the branch manager, but it's one way that you help in terms of covering 
and we do cover assets that uh, that you've taken as security in case of any eventualities there could be fire there could be uh, those things that we cover under insurance we do cover life uh, uh, in case in case of uh, the unfortunate uh, happens in, in terms of death but uh, it's, it's a benefit that we pass on to the customer such that we do not follow it through, follow you through in case there is any such eventualities but uh, it's important to clarify that with, with, with your branch manager uh then i could move on to the, to the to the next uh thank you moses um now to the questions coming via webex we have uh victoria who says thank you moses and anthony for the insights you are sharing to benefit smes uh she's asking about the same uh, 23 billion fund which i believe you have already addressed um she's asking for uh, contacts to assist uh, the nearest branches. Uh, Victoria, as uh, Moses mentioned, kindly visit the branch manager who will be in a position to assist you. And then we have um, a comment from Lucy Jerry. She's saying thank you so much to our banking team. And then uh, there is a comment that uh, from Lucy Jerry, Lucy Jerry says, "Sarah, as much as I can, as I resist and want to remain the old way of doing business, you really looked and visualized the new of digital era era for our new business. It's total digital." And then uh, David concurs with Lucy. He says, "This is right. There's no turning back. We must go digital. There are many advantages than fears." And then uh, David Kangede is asking, "How much can one get as unsecured loan maximum?" And David is from uh, Kariobangi branch. And then, um, yeah, I think that's it from uh, Webex. So the question from David on the maximum unsecured loan. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Uh, let me also thank Victoria, Lucy, and uh, Kanyada for that uh, feed the feedback and the questions that uh, come through. Uh, for David, uh, I think for Victoria, we had answered about the, the, the availability of the fund. The issue of the contacts, I think we had also shared to say is to see the branch manager or the relationship manager that you, uh, when your, your branch or the near the branch near near, near yourself. Lucy Jerry, thank you for that call. That, that compliment in terms of the the, the, good, the good job that you are doing. And I believe Sarah will also respond to the, the compliment on the, the emphasis on the digital channel. Is is we are in a digital era. And I think Sarah will also talk about that. Uh, David Kangete, in terms of the uh, unsecured limit, yes, we have an unsecured facility. It depends with the packages that I talked of, the bronze, the silver, and the, and, and, and the bronze. Uh, we have up to a maximum of 10 million, depending on the packet that you are in. Uh, but of course, uh, that is also dependent on the transactions, the way you're transacting in, in, in the bank, because being an unsecured facility, you also be interested in terms of the, the, the flows that come into the bank. But, but uh, David, you say you are a branch, but uh, you, you, your branch is Kangemi, uh, sorry, Kariobangi. I request you also talk to the branch manager. He will guide you accordingly in terms of, based on now the, 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 the transactions that are in, the, the business and the transactions that you are doing through, through your account. Thank you. Thank you. Maybe Sarah, you could, uh, you could also talk uh, talk to Lucy Jerry on that part of the digital. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Moses. Thank you. Uh, Lucy, for that uh, comment or observation that you have made, and I know that many of us have uh, have also observed uh, that it is the truth of the, ma the matter. In order to survive, we have to kick away our fears and we must uh, get into the digital space. But it's not just a question of getting into the digital space just for the sake of it. And that's why I'm saying we need to be intentional. You need to be strategic. What message do you want to pass across and to who and what is the best forum what is the best channel that you're going to use to sell your business to sell your products how do you identify these young people who we have said are so critical to the success of our businesses uh, to write out things for you to track the the progress uh, that's coming in through your, your your different channels you know the good good news is that you don't have to do it yourself 
this young switched on technologically savvy person can assist you for, uh, for, 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 for something small. So I just want to encourage us, let's not shy away from looking at these young people, having conversations with them. Just, just ask them, you know, what's trending? How, how do we do this? And, and leverage on that resource to take your business forward. They are the same people who review your products and services. They are the same people who recommend. They are the same people who can begin buzz, ex, you know, conversations, excitement about your products and services and influence other people to buy from you. Going back to one of the graphs that uh, Anthony uh, shared, he talked about, he showed us two graphs. I don't know if you remember one uh, for the rural and another one for uh, the urban. And those two graphs, if I can remember, were showing us, uh, you know, the priority areas, the, the healthcare, the schools and, you know, hotels and, and, and so on. But I looked at those graphs and, you know, they look the same. The bars sort of look the same heights to me. What does that mean? It means that there's very little difference between somebody who is operating in the rural and somebody who is operating in the urban space. Why? because of the whole conversation of going digital. So I just want to challenge you. If you're in the city and you're not going digital, there are people who are doing so in the rural areas and they become a direct competitor to you and they stand higher chances of getting a share of that customer's wallet. 2020, uh, 2020, we saw that, uh, you know, goods are, you know, they're able to move freely. I think I shared uh, with you those who are in the call and remember, if somebody is able to sell samosas from Lamu, Nairobi, how about you? That's exactly what we're talking about. Those are, you know, that's what the digital space has done. It has knocked down the walls and barriers, you know, of communication and so on. So this is just an encouragement. Let's let's go digital, but not just for the sake of it, not blindly. Let's be strategic and let's leverage on those platforms so that our businesses can move forward and so that we can make more money. Back to you, Moses. Thank you, Sarah. Diana, next round of questions, maybe as, as, we, as we cross. Yes, thank you. I've seen we have uh, quite a few uh, coming through YouTube. William Gitonga uh, says that the POS machines at Hopka, Jirani, and Merchants seem to raise a lot of concern in performance. Can you kindly invest in better machines to tap this market niche? Mm -hmm. And then uh, we have Moses Wanjala, who is asking, how do I increase our business mobile from 1 million limit to 2 million shillings limit? And then we have Nivas Technologies. Nivas Technologies asks, I'm told I qualify for an SME loan from COP, but once I go to the bank, I have a lot to provide. I think this is in terms of documentation. And then uh, we have Felix Murray. Felix says, hi, I'm an importer and the dollar has hit us badly. Any measures to grant us better exchange rates? Kiblin Tucha says this is an awesome forum. We honestly appreciate it. We will appreciate more if you give as per what you train. And then uh, we have Bernard Irungu. Bernard says we are in the construction industry. We import lifts for buildings. How can we access funding to assist in procuring equipment upfront? And the customer pays installments to the bank. We have a comment from uh, Anastasia, and she says, I appreciate the program. Let's grow together. Ben says, I've been attending good forums like this. Promise, like this, promise, hope. But if you go to the branch, they seem to be unaware with the ideas. And then Paul Terry says, a commendable job. Well done, the team. Thumbs up. And that's it from uh, YouTube. Over to you, Moses. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Diana. Diana, I think uh, some mouth through whatever feedback there. Thank you for the, those positive comments also for, to, to our customers. William, the issue of POS, I've taken that as feedback to say that uh, us is a uh, high time we upgraded our, our POS machines. I, I think I'll take that as feedback to our, to our team that um, that uh, is in that space of, of merchants. Uh, thank you for that feedback. Moses, uh, in terms of uh, the business uh, mobile loan, a million to two million. 
again, that uh, would also be dependent on on your transactions. But uh, uh, visit, visit, talk, talk, talk to your, talk to your, talk to your relationship manager. They should be able to guide you on how you go about it. Leave us. You talked of uh, uh, the, the issue of the the, 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 the items you provide. I, I think what what you are doing here is uh, is just is just facilitating to to give the information. There will be those things that will be requested at, at the branch, and uh, it is 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 basically to say that uh, a banker, a banker customer relationship is more or less like a doctor patient relationship where now the, the information that you give to you give to the banker the transactions in your account i think stand for you so if you don't open up to your banker they may not be able to present your case remember this is a person who visits your visits your business puts the information you give them into paper that pass goes to the next level in terms of approval so so uh, my, my my urge not only to to to, to leave us but to all of us is to ensure that uh, we have that open relationship with our with our, with our banker, with the with the with the with the with, 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 with the relationship manager, give them information to to make sure that they they, they stand for you in terms of uh, the the case that they present for for, for approval. The, I think that helps us in terms of demystifying some of these issues to say that uh, you have a challenge in terms of documentation. Let's open up to it. It helps even the banker or the or the or the, or the bank structure your facility depending on the information you give. Would I, in terms of the uh, import import measures and best, better exchange rates, again, uh, yes, I, I hear you. That's why how, how how it is in terms of the the exchange rates. Uh, we do have a department called Treasury that uh, that day to day guides guides on um, guides on exchange rates based uh, depending on how the, the economy is, and uh, through this department, it's, it's, it's also advisable as you talk to your to, to your relationship manager. Uh, on day-to-day -day basis, there is uh, a level that uh, that we allow in terms of the engagements. There is uh, through that department you can be able to pass uh, get insights not only not only not only on uh, on discounted rates, eh, but also get 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 information on how to to go about those those transactions on exchange rate. So uh, I would request that you also you also you also engage your branch manager or relationship manager. To be getting insights, uh, and I know uh, people, our relationship managers in Treasury can also be sending you uh, rates on 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 online daily. If, if that that would be the need or whatever frequency you are looking for, uh, Bernard, uh, you are talking of um, importation of uh, construction machinery. Uh, uh, we are saying number one for those who are importing, we do if you even issue letters of credit, you may not have even to pay money upfront. There are bank instruments that can stand for you on the other side. I create as of of credit you know, through the to, to the importers bank. So so again, we have solutions for that. We do also finance finance machinery and the asset finance program. So the importation can be facilitated through an LC. If it's upfront, you can also do do the sending the sending of the money there upfront. But uh, again, more information can be obtained from the from, from, from the from the from, from the business banker or the branch manager. For, for the benefit of uh, there's there's also the issue of Anastasia. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Anastasia, for that positive feedback, Bernard. And uh, I think for the rest, I would want to drop my number here in case of any query and uh, linking because I would I, I can link you to the to, to, to the nearest branch to the nearest banker. And uh, those who are saying that I think Bernard talked of an issue saying that uh, we've we've promised here, but uh, once you go you go to the branch, it's not it can turn out to be that. I just want to drop my number here. I'll drop it on the chat. Just pick that number and call. Uh, I'll be able to guide you to the to, to, to the nearest branch. I think that is it, uh, Diana. Thank you, Moses. Yes, that's it as far as the questions are concerned. Uh, Moses, you're on mute. Thank you. I'm asking Sarah, Anthony, whether you have any parting shot as we come to the end of the of the, of the forum. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Moses. Uh, we've indeed had a very wonderful first uh, session, and uh, we are looking forward to the weekly engagement. We have lined up uh, very uh, wonderful and important conversations for you going forward, and you'll be given more information. Please make it a point to join us. Uh, there's a lot more that we can learn as we move together. 
in 2021. Asante sana, I wish you all the best. Uh, back to, back to who, uh, Diana, back to Moses. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Uh, thank you, Diana. Uh, thank you to our customers for logging in today. Uh, I think my parting show to be, we are looking forward to a better year. And uh, let's put our best foot forward. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you very much. I think you've come to the end of the of today's uh, webinar, the information that you had wanted to pass to our customers. Thank you very much for, for, for attending. And uh, we'll continue inviting you for the Thursday's forum. Uh, please feel free to share. And whatever that pass uh, you pick that you've not clarified, Feel, feel free to visit the branch. As I said, I've got my number on the, on, the, on, the, on the chat so that you can pick it and also engage me in case of any, any, any question, any feedback. I'll pass whatever I can pass to Muri, I'll pass to Muri. Whatever I can pass to Sarah, I'll also pass to, to Sarah. Thank you so much and God bless you. So we can leave at Arisha. Oh, yeah.